Hello and welcome. What we're going to be looking at in this video today is we're going to be looking at camera techniques, which is probably the most commonly asked question about filmmaking. And when you're analysing films and asked to refer to camera techniques, it's one of the ones that's often quite confusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to just have a look at all the basic categories of camera techniques there are out there and go through what each of them do and how you can identify them. Okay, so let's just go through the basics first. They come in three basic styles, really. Distance, angles, and movement. So let's just go through each one just a little bit uh, to give you a bit of a background, and then we'll go through each one specifically. So to start with, we've got distance. Now distance is literally that. It's just distance between the camera and the subject. So the camera and then whoever's being filmed. Now, in our case here, we've got a bit of a medium shot going, which is basically me from the waist up. However, it can be something like a long shot, long way away, to a close-up. We'll go through that in a second. Angles refer to where the camera is positioned. So, uh, in terms of the angle to the subject, so whether it's down low, up high, and so on. Movement literally refers to how the camera moves. So, if it's attached to something, what it's attached to, uh, how it moves, all those things uh, are tied into the idea of movement and how they take action in basically in, in, in the shooting. Okay, so let's have a look at some key terms first. Let's start with distance. All right, now to start with, we've got some basically your, your long shot. And what your long shot is, is basically it shows everything on the screen. So the one at the top there of the boy and girl getting the present is basically a long shot, it shows everything around them. An extreme long shot even goes even further back than that and shows, focuses more on the setting. So it would focus more on the park around them than it would if it was just a long shot. A medium shot, on the other hand, is like we've got now. So basically, it goes from the waist up. There's not much more to really tell about a medium shot. It's more just to, to highlight people interacting with each other. Uh, more than you would if you're doing a long shot. Long shot, you can get distracted with bits of scenery. Medium just helps to bring that a little bit closer. A close-up basically focuses on the shoulders to the head, so here up. And what they do is they help to show reaction a little bit more. And an extreme close-up, which goes even more detailed than that, is if you will focus straight on my eye right now, or my mouth, or something along those lines. Something which is meaningful to show in a really, really close up kind of way. Okay, so it's basically, those are the main things. It's either long, medium, or short. Uh, and then you would just give a respective name to it. I mean, these names these names vary depending on who, who uses them. Long shots can often be called wide shots. Close ups can be called tight shots. It doesn't really matter as long as you've got some sort of definition which says what sort of shot it is. There are a number of different definitions in use, and you can just pick whichever one you like. Okay, let's look at angles. Now, angles is basically, as I said before, is where the camera is positioned in terms of angle to the, the subject. Mainly we're looking at it in terms of high and low, because it's very rarely that a, a camera will be shooting someone at an off angle. And that's mainly because at, at a certain level, it's, it's not pointing to anywhere. It's going to be pointing directly at the subject. You don't want your camera being pointed off, off target because obviously it's not going to do very much. So a high angle shot, for instance, will look down on someone. So do it in a way that it basically uh, makes us feel more powerful. So whoever's in the audience will feel more powerful than the person who's on screen. And it's sort of trying to belittle them a little bit. So you imagine, and if someone is sitting up on a throne and looking down on you, then that person would be more powerful. And if you were to sit in that throne at the top and look down, everyone would appear much smaller, which means you feel more powerful. And that's pretty much the same effect that goes on here. So that top arrow is roughly where it would be positioned. Eye level is pretty much what we see already. As is, it's a normal level straight at the eye line sort of, of shot. So we don't really need to draw an arrow to that one because it's really pretty much at eye level and low angle, which is just below that bottom arrow there. And what a low angle shot does is it's a shot that looks up at the subject. And that's to make them now appear more powerful. So instead of being the kings on the throne now, we are the ones at the bottom. 
we're the ones being looked down upon. So when you're looking up at someone, again, you feel somewhat less powerful. And it's sort of basic human instinct, really, that when we uh, look up at someone, we feel intimidated. But if we look down on someone, we feel powerful. And it's pretty much the same thing that camera angles tap into when they are, when they are basically being set up is they can tap into that emotion of feeling either vulnerable or strong. Next one we'll look at is point of view. Now point of view basically is your camera becoming the eyes of a character. So we see basically what they see. So we pretend that we are a a member of the cast or in some cases even in sort of mockumentary style films, quite often the camera itself is a character and it sort of forms a bit of a narrator. So really depends on the, the type of film that it is, but point of view shots, generally speaking, are from the perspective of a character, and it's something that sort of helps to see us to see the world in their own eyes, and can be an interesting technique to use in film, to say the least. So those are the basic ones. So you've got your, your high shot, your middle shot, your eye line one, your low shot, and then also your point of view shot. And that's basically the the main four angles that you've got. Next one, we're going to look at movement. Okay, so you think of movement, you think of a camera moving, and it's basically what it is. Now, there are two types to start with, which is pan, which is when it moves left to right or right to left, and tilt, which basically camera moves up and down. Now, the camera will stay stationary, on it on a mounting when it does this however the actual camera itself will pivot usually and that's what we mean by a pan or a tilt shot so the camera is stationary or the camera itself is stationary but it just moves from side to side or up and down now the ones where the camera actually moves along with the the subject are things like handheld now handheld is basically when the cameraman is lugging the thing on on his shoulder his or her shoulder and it's held by the ca- cameraman or camera woman, usually on the shoulder. It's usually a lot more shaky and it helps to sort of set up a sense of movement or action. So you'll see it used a lot in particularly action movies for chase scenes. You'll see it used a lot in horror films to sort of and to create this sort of climax of fear, all of those things, and, and to create this sort of sense of movement. So these shots are, are quite commonly used and they create such a wonderful effect when you see them in, in editing. A tracking or a dolly shot is literally a camera on a railway. So what you've got is you've got tracks, you've got the camera sitting on a sort of a, uh, a little cart and it just runs back and forth along the, uh, the rail tracks and basically it moves a little bit quicker and a lot more stably than a handheld camera. And that's basically the what it does. It, it's, it creates a side-to-side effect. Now, a boom and crane shot is when the camera is attached to either a boom crane or attached to a helicopter or other moving device such as a car. And what that does is basically it, um, it helps to create a much grander sense of movement. And particularly, it goes from a very long shot to a very short or close-up shot very, very easily. And these shots are really, really effectively used, particularly with crowds and having lots of people about because it can show so much and can move around quite a lot. And re- literally what a crane, a crane shot is, is a camera attached to a crane. I know film people are very imaginative when they come up with these names. So a crane shot comes with a crane, a tracking shot comes with a track. They're fairly self-explanatory titles. Zooming in, you'd be used to using this on your camera. So camera zooms in from long shot to a close shot or, or in reverse, but usually it goes from that way. Now, those are basically all the movement shots. And that's pretty much it. So you, you're looking at either category being movement or angle or a basically a, um, a, a distance shot. So those are the main categories. Okay, let's move up onto setup. So what are you looking at for setup? And why, why am I giving you this background? Well, I'll tell you for a start. Camera setups take a long time. They take a really long time. In films, they often take about 30 minutes to an hour to set up each shot. So not something that's done by accident. Filming a minute and a half takes about a day. It takes a really, really long time to put a film together, particularly when you've got to move things out of the way, when you've got to coordinate extras and stunts, everything else like that. 
which means when directors and filmmakers and directors of photography shoot a film, they want to get right first time. They want the, the, the camera shots to be exactly right. Now, why is that meaningful? Well, cameras are usually set up with a purpose in mind, which is basically to create shots that will best suit the meaning of a scene. So what I mean by that is when you look at how a camera is put together or put out there in a film, then basically what it's doing is it's being set up in such a way where it's trying to create a sense of meaning. So if they are having a, a scene where they're showing someone being angry, they want to position the camera in such a way that we can see it quite clearly that they're angry. And so in that case, it's a very deliberate action. They're not necessarily stationing it so English students can have things to talk about. Definitely not. But what it does mean is that you've got some things that you can, you can basically you can talk about and you can go on about when you, when you look at how they actually do create meaning. Now, the director often works very closely with someone who's called the DOP or Director of Photography. And that's to basically make sure that each shot that they film is exactly right. And that's the thing, it's the same thing. So a director is usually working in a, in a creative capacity, whereas a director of photography is usually working in more of the technical capacity. So the difference between those two is you've got the creative, who's the director, the one who wants to see the final product being really great so he can touch his name to it, or she. Whereas a director of photography uh, basically is, is someone who is just mainly concerned with getting the camera shots ready, uh, making sure that all the framing is right and that all the camera gear and everything is working, along with obviously the camera staff and, and those who work with the technical side of things. Now, why are camera angles important? Okay, this is the question you're probably most asking. Why, why, why are we focusing so much on camera angles? Well, the camera is our window into the world of a film. Quite literally. When you see me now, you've got a window to this explanation for the film. So, cameras are, are basically the heart of what it is filmmaking does, and it's pretty central to the, the, the film language process. What they choose to show and not show is a story within itself. So the way that cameras are set up is basically it, it's, it's another form of storytelling by filming things in certain ways. And it's for that reason why they're important. So they contribute greatly to the overall value of the film and also the meaning of the film as well. So as I said before, when cameras are set up and they take a long time to do, you've got this basically this intention to contribute to the meaning of the film by having a camera angle in a certain place. So that is basically the heart of what you're looking at, is looking at, thinking carefully about why they've chosen to shoot someone or something in a particular sort of way, to create meaning in their own way. So that's really the basis of camera angles. Have a look at the direction, where it's pointing, what it is doing, and everything else, and that's basically it for, for camera angles. Usually, there are some guides around. We have some guides as well, which will help you with the, the technical terms for, for cameras, and there are lots of different versions around. But otherwise, until next time, I'll see you later.